Well, if the Lord has been good to you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever made a way for you, tell him thank you. If the Lord ever opened a door for you, tell him thank you. Lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him after all I've been through, tell him after all the devil tried to do to me, say it emphatically, I still have my joy. Come on and give God some praise right where you are. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. God bless you while you're yet standing in reverence to the word of God. If you'll go with me to the book of Zechariah, it's found in the book of Zechariah, the fourth chapter and um, the sixth verse. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, and the sixth verse. And these are the words that you will find recorded there. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Can you say that after me? Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I want to talk to you for the next few fleeting moments from the subject, our mission made possible. Our mission made possible. Thank you. I certainly want to. I've done my preliminaries beforehand, but once again, I want the TV audience to know that I have a beautiful wife, First Lady Karen Clark Sheard, and I appreciate her. We are endeavoring to continue the work of God by spreading the gospel, for we are equipped with a message for this mess age. Our cause is great, and our challenges are many, but let us always keep in mind that our sufficiency is of God and not of man. We realize that our mission can be noted as a difficult undertaking. However, it is worthy of every effort if we compare our objective to the conquest of ambition, the splendor of great achievements, or the benefit of useful discoveries. Even if we compare it to the treasures which art and labor amass, the luxuries which treasures purchase, the comforts of friendship or the most refined social life, it outweighs them all. Look at the dimensions uh, of the field on which we have entered. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 38th verse, that the field is the world. Therefore, we must note, my brothers and sisters, that our work area is much larger than the confinement of the four walls of our beautiful sanctuaries. Think on the many obstacles we face, how each one presents some peculiar character of evil. It is difficult to say, which proves to be the greatest because sin has such a tight vice on its victims. Some folk are all out ridiculous in their wrongdoing, while others are refined. We don't know which to look upon with the greatest amount of disdain. You've got the I don't care sinner who will do whatever. And then you have the slick sinner who portrays themselves as not too offensive but dictates the most danger. What you must understand is that the mind of a sinner is in awful shape because he has sunk to the lowest point of intellectual debasement. His ideas are confined within a narrow space. And even though their faculties are capable of taking a large and lofty range, their mind is only elevated to enslavement. Seeing my friends, when produced and nourished, becomes like an enemy entrenched within an impregnable fortress. And say what you will, but frivolous ceremonies can never impart peace. 
yet they lull and stupefy until the soul is unwilling to be aroused and disturbed. My brothers and sisters, the senses and appetites support this, for evil intentions suit the depravity of the mind. For if we would read 1 Peter, the fourth chapter and the fourth verse, it says, wherein they think, it's strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot. In other words, many sinners don't think anything is wrong with them, but they think it's something wrong with us for not wanting to do what they do. Consider with what force and to what depth must religion strike. How then shall we defeat this evil? Brothers and sisters, it is useless to attempt to defeat evil by human power and might. Observe that human power in and of itself is insufficient to affect change. Whatever the skill and energy man may produce, they can never bring about a moral change. The force of human authority has made men hypocrites, but never believers. The power of intimidation has destroyed some of the supposed faithful, but a weapon of death has never become the instrument of life. Human lies and human laws have produced hollowed and constrained submission, but never the voluntary homage of the heart. Armies have gone forth to demolish the works of man, but armies cannot build the temple of the Lord. Great is the power of persuasion, but what was its effect before the gospel? 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 said, the world by wisdom knew not God. Among the celebrated nations of antiquity, the human intellect had reached its highest elevation. Yet all that was affected by the majesty of eloquence, the researches of philosophy, and the strength of moral reasoning turned out to be no more than an exchange of rude idolatry for a system of theology as licentious as it was complicated. My friends, intelligence is good, but intellectuality never saved the sinner. As a matter of fact, our so-called brilliance has caused man to become more entrenched in evil. So I ask, has any system of morals invented and or propagated by the power of man been able to subdue corrupt hearts? Have you ever heard of a man stop sinning because of another man's might or power? I exclaim to you an emphatic no. You cannot find these blessings unless there was a power higher than man. To change man's heart, we must have the effectual effusions of a divine grace. However, in effecting such a change, God will not make a display of human power and might. In establishing his spiritual kingdom, we find that God chose the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, a people who have been empowered by God have been selected for the purpose of stripping Satan of his glory and trampling him in the dust. For we must remember that Satan does not belong in the seat next to you. He does not belong on the level that God has placed you, but he belongs under our feet. And so this world is looking for us. This world is looking for the folk who can help them turn their lives around. We're the ones whose progenitor was a wanderer in a strange land. Yes, we've been oppressed and hated. Some have passed through bitter captivity. Some were brought so low until they became almost hopeless. Yet the Lord's people are resilient. For our leader is a desire of every nation. The lily of the valley, the bright 
and morning star, the governor of every nation. I'm here to tell you today that his name is Jesus. And yet even Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me. Jesus said, I can only do it while it is night because when, uh, while it is day because when the night cometh, no man can work. My brothers and sisters, Jesus observed this thing called time. So let us note what is time. Time is measured duration. In other words, it has a beginning and it has an ending. Time, however, has a mixed effect on mankind. Yet it engulfs every one of us. Sometimes it serves as our best friend and yet it serves as our worst enemy. Case in point, when we are enjoying some element of life, time soars with irresistible rapidity. But when we dread something or wish for the end of some event, time creeps with the pace of a snail. However, Jesus was not bound entirely in time's trackless maze. For he was the only man who was truthfully as old as his father. And yet still more puzzling, he was older than his own mother. Yet he stepped back into this capsule of time and showed respect for it by saying, my time has come and there is a need that I must go away. But as he went away, he made preparations for those of us who would do his will. Jesus was spoken of as Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Jesus is both the inauguration and consummation of time. However, he used time to make our mission possible. He came clothed in all feebleness of a mortal body. He came being the subject of want and sorrow. He came as the subject of opposition and cruelty. He was betrayed and deserted and crucified. Yet in the midst of all of this, he was contending single-handedly against the powers of darkness. He was bringing glory to God, spreading peace through the earth, raising the guilty from hell to heaven, and reconciling a condemned mankind to the righteousness of God. Yes, he was wounded for our transgression. He he was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes uh, we are healed. I reiterate it wasn't by might because if it were somebody would have held him back nor was it by power because if it had been somebody would have made a decree to bring an end to his message but it was by my spirit said the Lord my brothers and sisters, if you survey the history of the modern church from the period of reform, which it was inspired by the great Martin Luther, down to the times in which we live where the church has been influenced by C.H. Mason, Luther dealt with change of popery to reformation. And Mason denoted that the church is something you can't join in, but you got to be born in it. And this, my brothers and sisters, should make every saint happy because Matthew 19 and 26 tells us that the things which are impossible with man are possible with God. So I must close by telling you that it's not about how influential you are. It's not about how much money you have. It's not about how powerful you you think you are. It's not about your family lineage nor where you matriculated because the closed eye cannot see the light. The callous heart will not receive the truth. Yet it is by the spirit which works effectually on the soul. It is by the truth that we are sanctified. And ah, my brothers and sisters, I must tell you 
you that if you're going to do this work, you got to be sanctified. In order for our mission to be accomplished, you got to be sanctified because his spirit won't dwell in an unclean temple. For I heard 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5 say, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. Do me a favor and I'm going to my seat, but help me preach to your neighbor and say we need the Holy Ghost and the great work of converting souls belongs exclusively to God for John 3 and 4 states for we are born of the spirit and so this subject affords encouragement under difficulties for the third chapter of 2nd Corinthians and the 5th and 6th verses it says not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but help me say but our sufficiency is of God who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life Ah, there is no text present nor futuristic that God is not equal to so my prayer is church of God in Christ Lord I'm ready to do your will Lord if you want somebody here am I send me saints the Lord has chosen us and now our prayer must be use us and anoint us every saint must must realize that it's not by knowledge because knowledge will fail but I heard the Lord Jesus say that the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel it's the anointing that will destroy yokes it's the anointing that will cause people to change their lives it's the anointing that sets me in free and so that's why we must pray Lord whatever you take don't take your spirit from us you can take our houses you can take our cars you can take our money but Lord don't take your spirit from me because it's because of your spirit that I will mission is made possible and I'm glad it's like that because the completion of our mission doesn't rest on money I may not have the know-how but if I have the anointing our mission is already possible do me a favor grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor my, our mission is possible because of Jesus and that's why Paul picked it up and said I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me I can win a soul I can reach my goal church we can't give in to the devil for the Bible says that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood but against principality powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole arm of God so that you can stand grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor endure hardness as a good soldier tell your neighbor we're gonna win the storm may rise and the wind may blow but keep on fighting for the devil comes to steal kill and destroy but I got news for you if God be for us who can be against us tell your neighbor hang in there and be not 
weary in well doing for you shall reap oh I wish I had somebody that would help me preach for a few minutes and tell your neighbor God is with us God is on our side God is making a way so my prayer is Lord use us fix the church anoint the church because I know that you made me a promise that you'll never leave me nor forsake me you're my rock in a weary land you're my shelter in a time of a storm you're my satisfied he is just what I need so I came by as I go to my seat to tell you that for though we walk in the flesh we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds let's pull them down pull down lying pull down cheating pull down sexual misconduct pull down and the Lord said I'm going to empower you because yea though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death tell your neighbor I ain't scared you got the wrong neighbor tell your neighbor I ain't scared because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own get ready church I got news for you eyes have been seen ears have been heard neither has it in into the hearts of me the good things that the Lord has in store for you grab that neighbor by the hand pull on them and push them y'all ain't pushing nobody pull on them and push them push them and pull on them and say neighbor get ready God is about to open some doors for you God is about to break the stronghold you've been crying long enough get ready to shout get ready to praise him because can't nobody do you like he can and he is everything to me grab your neighbor hand again and this time we're going a little higher grab that hand and say neighbor get ready and let's go higher Let's go higher. Let's go higher. Yank that hand loose and say, God is already set you up. I came to tell you, you're already a winner. You're already victorious. Stop looking like the victim and start walking like the victim. Start walking in your calling. It's already done. Come on and say it's already done. It's already done. And I come against the enemy. Satan took your tail. Get out of here. The blood is against you. The anointing of God is chasing you from among us. Satan, you're a liar. Satan, you're a liar. We are already victorious. If you believe it, say yes. The world is watching. Let's be attentive to the need. The program now calls for the the call of Christ, the invitation. 
We want the world to know. I'll ask you to hold your positions. While the whole world is watching, we want to give an invitation not only to the confines of this place, but for wherever the streaming signal has been sent. Somebody say amen. We are in more than 100 countries. This place is full and running over. And if we can now with unanimity and with our sanctified strength, call on God for the saving of souls. You may have brought someone with you and we make this invitation from the 115th Holy Convocation for you to come now, bring that individual to this altar. Bring the sick, the half, bring those who are broken, those who are despondent and filled with despair, bring them to the Lord even now, even now. And for those of you who are walking, please stop your walking. Hold your feet in respect to the call. Hold your feet in respect to the call. Somebody give the Lord a hand praise for they will be obedient. Hold your feet. I'm going to pray and for those who are watching us around the entire world. Draw near to your device, whatever it might be, telephone, laptop, iPad. God can still make contact with you. The prayer of salvation, healing and deliverance. Let's bow our heads right now as the world looks on the church of God in Christ. God the creator himself sent himself in Jesus Christ the Son and with the perfecting mission in obedience he achieved by means of death on the cross the conquering of the world of sin both redeeming and reconciling creation unto himself oh Jesus hey glory and so at this 115th holy convocation we pray for salvation we pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. Jesus' disciples asked him, tell us what shall be the signs of thy coming in the end of the world. And you said, many would be deceived and ye will hear of wars and the rumors of wars. Hallelujah. He said, these things will happen. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But he said that the end is not yet. And in the brokenness and despair of this season, wars in Israel, wars in the Ukraine, wars throughout the Middle East, wars in the urban environs of our country, rising death total by gun violence, rising death total by drug addiction, families being disoriented and destroyed. Now is the time for salvation, for healing, and for deliverance. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Yes, it is, it's time. Oh God, we ask you right now, Lord, in this convocation, we know that you can save this world from evil. We know that you can save us from governments that are haplessly mired in wickedness. Lord, we know that you can heal on the geopolitical scene from the tragedies that are too pervasive and numerous for us to mention and to numerate. We know that you can deliver men from guns in every pocket, malice and hatred in every heart, racial discrimination, anxiety and despair, and craziness. And hey, that engulfs our neighborhoods and even our homes. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for salvation. And this church and our leader has come to you and our speeches with preaching, not of enticing words of men's wisdom, but demonstrations with power and under the anointing of God. And so, Lord, as we prepare to return to our destinations, having now had our spiritual cups filled, our broken spirits bended, our hearts, oh God, made strong. Now you embrace us. And for those who say they want to be saved, save them right now. Heal them right now. Deliver them right now. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, Jesus. Chloe, 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 Chloe. The hand touch of God. The hand touch of God. The hand touch of God. Reach where we cannot go. See but we cannot see. Do what we cannot do. We have faith to know. Faith to believe. And faith to receive. That you're doing it now. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. Hallelujah. Has appeared to all men teaching us. Denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And God, it is so. It is so. Now say to God as we do it together, Lord, you've heard our prayer. We pray for salvation. We pray for healing. And we pray for deliverance. And with the power of our amen, it is done in Jesus' name. Now, Father, come on, grab that neighbor's hand. Tell your neighbor, 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 we are empowered to do the work of the Lord. Come on, sell your neighbor. Neighbor, into your hands, I squeeze encouragement. Say it again, neighbor, into your hands, I squeeze encouragement. I squeeze power. I squeeze boldness. But tell them most of all, neighbor, I squeeze an anointing in your hand now. In your hand now. In your hand now. In your hand now. It is so. It is so. Come on and give God praise for that anointing. Give God praise for that anointing. Yes, Lord. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you for it. I thank you. I thank you right now. Come on, somebody ought to praise God for deliverance is at your house. If you can praise him here, deliverance is at your house. In your family. Praise him here. Praise him here. Praise him here. Praise him here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I thank you for it. Come on, I thank you for it. Come on and thank him for it. Oh, the devil don't want you to thank him for it. The devil don't want you to thank him for it. The devil don't want you to thank him for it. But I came to make the devil mad. Come on, somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. I feel healing right now. I feel deliverance right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Woman be healed. Man be delivered. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. Oh, the devil has no power. It's over 10,000 saints in this room. And if I can just get you to praise God, let the devil know that he is defeated. We're coming together in our praise. We're squeezing the devil to death. Satan, you are liar. The power of God is against you. And I command you in the name that's above every name. Take your hands off of my brother. Take your hands off of my sister. Take your hands off of our children. In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the, uh, ha, ha, ha. Hey, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I see deliverance right over in the corner. I see deliverance in the corner. Come on, you got to praise him in order to get it up here. You got to praise him. Deliverance is coming this way. It's coming that way. You got to praise him where you are. 
Come on, come on, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to steal something from Bishop Hankerson. I feel God saying it, sister. Just everybody, just turn around. And as you get back where you were, say, God, just turn that thing around. Somebody needs to turn one more time. Just turn around and say, God, just turn that thing around. It's all right now. It's all right now. I dare you to declare it's all right now. I dare you to declare it's all right now. My body is already here. My heart is already sick. My mind is already regulated. presence of the Lord. I'm going to let you go. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, just grab one more person by the hand and tell them I want to obey Bishop. But Bishop doesn't understand how good God's been to me. Shake that hand and say, I got a right to praise him. I got to stop. Oh, praise him. Praises are coming for the other. Come on and praise him. You've been in power. You've been in power. You've been in power. Come on and praise him. Make the devil out of a liar. I am a praiser. Woo! You got a right to praise him. After all you've been through, you got a right to praise him. After all the devil tried to do to you, I tell you to dance in his face. I tell you to dance in his face. Hey. I tell you to claim some new territory and just start praising him. Something's going to happen.
to be in a dead service. Tell them I came here to have church. And since I'm here, I'm gonna have church. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated if you can. But on your way down, just look at somebody and say, he's still been good. God bless you, please. I just have a couple of things I have to do. And then we're going to go. Okay. See? That's Bishop Macklin doing that.
for one minute and let me see how you gonna praise him. Woo! Everybody say yeah. Come on, church of God and Christ. 